Dramatic video of a rescue in the St. John's River after a car fell over the Dames Point Bridge. The driver only had minor injuries. Incredible video and pictures there. Firefighters rescued the diver driver whose vehicle fell 35 feet from the bridge on Saturday night. The section of the water on the Arlington side of the bridge was shallow. Crews found this 27 year old driver kneeling on the roof of his car, which was underwater as the tide was rising, along with the threat of hypothermia. Well, I mean, when I first got down to him, I mean, he obviously he was very thankful that I was there. You know, he was very cold um, and he was just really appreciative and, and he was ready to get out of that water. State troopers say another driver was speeding and hit the man's sedan from behind. That person could be charged with reckless driving, unlawful speed and other violations. Now, let's turn things over to Vic Michelucci right now, and he is standing by with some of the firefighters that were a part of this incredible <laughs> rescue, Vic. Yeah, and there were 40 to 50 firefighters, as well as Jacksonville Sheriff's officers who all took part. So a big team here. We've got mic issues here, Kyle. So a big team. Can we do it? Can you hear me Vic. yet? Go ahead, Vic. We can hear you. Keep going. Okay, you can hear me now? We can hear you. Okay, so... A big team, a lot going on behind the scenes, and we've got some of that team here, some of the firefighters who were there from Station 30. And we want to talk to you. Phil, we met you yesterday. You were the man down there on the rope, but you stayed humble, and you said it was all about every single person that was part of that process. Yes, sir, absolutely. I mean, everything we do is team nature uh, to begin with. Um, and it, it, it's, it starts with the chief, with his direction and his command presence on scene. Um, and, you know, JSO had, a, uh, had it started with us. They had a throw rope down to the, to the victim, keeping him in place. Um, these guys knew exactly what to do when we got on scene, setting up the aerial ladder for us, getting the two-line lowering system put in place, and doing their job flawlessly. Yeah, so tell me, chief, tell me about this. I mean, this is not an easy scenario, but it's something that you do train for. We had a rising tide, we had a lot of rain, we had dark conditions, we had, <laughs> I mean, cold temperatures with hypothermia. It, it truly was the perfect storm, at least when it comes to Jacksonville conditions. Right, that's right. Um, we had a lot going on against us as far as the, the, the dark and the rain and the cold. Um, fortunately, uh, we've been training for this for a long time. It's something that we've not actually done on scene, but when the captain and I looked at each other on scene, we almost didn't have to say it two-line lowering system let's go down and do it um, we had the boats coming in for a long time and uh, everything worked out just the way it was supposed to sure and engineer Mitchell tell us about your part and, and being able to work with that team because it, it, it truly was everybody had to have their place and they had to have their role to make this happen yes, that's definitely true um, when we got there obviously on the turn I worked the turntables um, I did the hoisting and moving them the up turntables yes yeah, sir the turntables up top there um, Picking them up and moving them around. Um, squad 37, which was on scene with us, big help. They had a, they, um, stuff already pre-rigged and ready to go. And we just ran our lines down and we moved, capped them up. And we lowered them down. And after we got them secure, I lift them up. We just rotate them around and set them on the ground pretty easy. Mm -hmm. let's, first, let's, let's talk over here because as, as fire rescue personnel, this is probably what you live for because you do want to come in and and solve problems in the most difficult of situations. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and like Chief and Captain said, this is exactly what we train for. It's it's not it's never good when something like this happens, but to have that training and to be able to just jump in and do it, that's that's why that's what we do. Yeah, it's good. Certainly. What's the uh, the proudest moment with something like this? And I know that you are still on duty, so you can't really sit back and, and look at this because you've got more medical calls, car crashes, fires, emergencies to respond to. But you've got to think this one reason is why I'm so proud. Um, we, don't, you know, we don't wish for bad things to happen, obviously, you know, um, but for us, you know, doing the training and doing what we do, it's, you know, if those bad things are to happen, we want to, we want to be the ones that actually get to respond. Mm -hmm. You know, and for us, you know, we get go down and be able to get somebody, you know, out of the water like that and put them on the bridge. I mean, you know, it's possibly a once in a career opportunity for us and chief jolly let's talk about 
safety here. Obviously, the state troopers with the Florida Highway Patrol are still investigating. It appears that speed from another driver is the factor, but you did have rough conditions where people need to slow down. That car went into the water. Do we know how the 27-year-old man was able to get out yet? I have not heard. Um, we were just very fortunate when we did see him standing on top of the car that he was, A, the car landed how it did on its tires, and B, it was low tide. Um, so that and, and see that he was conscious and, and alert and able to climb out and get on top of the car and basically buy himself some time until we got there and um, were able to get down and get him. So we're, we're very fortunate. He's very fortunate for that also. Well, we say this a lot, but we cannot say it enough. Thank you for all that you do. I know that you all are just a small snippet of the first responders, police and fire that were there that night. So certainly we appreciate each and every person that had a role. And if we can talk to this 27 year old man, we truly want to hear his story because we know that he has got to be thankful for the men and women of JFRD as well as JSO who, who truly very likely saved his life here. So thank you to all of you and we will be right back.